Okay, Roger from uh, Mudfossil University today was discussing ether again, which I've been working on for years now, and we have photographed it in experiments and sent all that information off years ago to all the top universities, never heard a word. But all of a sudden they decide they have discovered ether. Now, I think this is kind of disgraceful to be perfectly honest with you. Plato and all the rest of them back then knew about ether. According to the ancients, they um, spelled it ether or ether. It's also called the quintessence. It's the material that fills the region of the universe. All the physical existence, the terrestrial sphere. The concept of ether was used in several theories to explain several natural phenomena, such as how light, traveling of light, and gravity. And then in the late 19th, 19th century, physicists postulated ether permeate all throughout space, providing a medium through which light could travel in a vacuum, obviously. But evidence for the presumption the medium found Michael Morley's experiment destroyed that. And they, then from then on, it was forget about it. Now, all of a sudden, they discovered it again, because there is no other possible way that light gets here from the sun. Absolutely none. Zero. Einstein said, oh, it's a photon. It comes out of space. It, it, it's, there's nothing there. Zero. Nothing. No mass whatsoever. Well, no mass means nothing. Nothing means nothing. Nothing does nothing. And it was a, a, a total nonsense from the moment it was stated. And even his own equation, E equals mc squared, means that if photons, which he says are massless, they contain no mass whatsoever. That's a zero. E equals zero times anything means E is zero. So the photon has zero energy. Very, very, very weak-minded theory, and I mean, it's in a hundred years, and nobody will stand up. I've been screaming about this for years now. Now, all of a sudden, they decided, oh, we found the fifth element. Well, guess what, my friends? Fifth element was also in Plato's Tinius. Speaking about air, Plato mentions there is a most translucent kind called the name ether. It's really very, very, very poor form. Now, um... I, everybody knows I've been working on ether and light and everything for years. I've been posting this. Nobody's been paying any attention to it, really. But I mean, very few. And um, so I got this from my friend today, Aaron. Physicists confirmed the discovery of a fifth force. All right? They're taking credit for discovering something that's been known for throughout history. Physicists confirmed discovery previously unknown. It's not previously unknown. The fifth fundamental force. This is really not right. Somebody should speak out against these people. They do this kind of stuff and take credit for things that they've dismissed, and then all of a sudden they decide that it's it's good again. Now w they've got to go, they've got to confront Einsteinian uh, a theory of nothingness of photons, and they they talk about they, the reason they found this because they're trying to figure out dark photons somewhere out here. Talks about. It that they, they were looking for photons and they decided there must be dark photons, which there are. The, the, the photons are not real, they're electrons. They're coming through space from the sun and they are dark in the interim. It's dark energy, dark matter. I've been saying this for years. There's nothing that can get to the sun to us without having a particle moving continuously. Something's moving. Not nothing. It's not, not a wave of nothingness. So let me show you the real facts. This is ether right here. All these dots are ether. And the reason they are glowing like this is because it's in a darkened room and a laser pulse of red laser light coming through here, which only has a tiny, tiny, tiny dot right in the center here. But when it comes through, it forces the opening of space around it and forces these regions to go into other people's regions. They glow at that point. All the molecules in space own a region, they're happy there. Once you start pushing something through that ocean of particles that are happy, they become disturbed. When they do that, they glow. All right, you saw that field coming through, and what it is is there's a little dot in the center, and it's crushing through there just like it does with a sonic wave and a jet, breaking the sound barrier. Now, there's the particle beam. All right, that's all it is right there. That's the beam. That's what comes from this and what causes this wave to open up is this beam. Well, all of a sudden it's saying, holy smokes, I'm being sucked in faster. You see that? 
That's accelerating. You can't tell me that's not accelerating. It's not a person on the face of this planet can say, oh, that's nothing. No, that doesn't mean anything. Well, yes, it means something. It means that that thing is accelerating. And when it starts accelerating, it's being pulled faster because it's being forced through this Venturi. They're piling up here and, and becoming excited because they can't get to here. They're forcing each other through here, and when they explode out the other side, which they have to ex accelerate, there is no option whatsoever. And the reason they're starting to accelerate here, I mean to ex uh, excite here, is because they're being impeded more and more and more and more. And then all of a sudden, by the time you get here, they are just being blocked almost completely. And forcing each other through here, it's a venturi, two rounded it's two it's actually construction nails, and that's only a construction red laser. Very inexpensive, less than fifty dollars. You do this whole thing, do it at home, and I have other people doing it now. And I'm going to show you some fa fabulous shots I just got yesterday. I'm, we're looking into them right now. Very, very interesting. Now, what comes out of here is the particle beams that we all know about. Is these? They call that the. Um, uh, what do you call it? The patterns that they, they, the double slit experiment where they have the things on the back, the impedance or whatever they call it. Um, I can't think of it. But anyway, all it is is these are electrons coming out of here, forcing each other away from this side and that side. So you're seeing them get away, and by the time they come out here, they can sort of flip around all they want. But they, primarily, they're, this is pushing this way, and this is pushing this way. They're both pushing both ways. So you end up with a beam in the center. That's why you see the real bright beam in the center. Now, and then you see these rays because this is saying stay away from here, this guy's saying stay away from here, so they start to build up these arrays. Now, and that's called atomization, plasma, whatever you want to call it, but at this point these electrons no longer own a region. Before they own their own region. They all had their own little dot that they own. And they say, okay, this is my place, don't anybody push me, and when they push me I'm going to glow. And that's what's happening. And this right here shows you the ether, and that is, there's no, if anybody can explain to me how these little dots are formed after a light which we saw accelerated, I don't care what anybody says, that was accelerated, it's coming out of here in white chaos, these little tiny fibers are coming out which show where the particles are, those are the particle trails, they are headed by these fields. Those fields are from polarized ether surrounding the tiny, tiny particle in the center, which is charged. It's negative. It's going faster than hell, smashing into the ether here, inducing a current around itself in a right-hand turn as it goes through space. And I have pictures of that, too. And I have pictures of this showing this right here is a crushed field. You see that? You see the difference in this one here and this one here? These are round. This one here. You see this crushing in here and this crushing in here? That's forcing that one to, to, to be more massive. It's crushing it. It's turned purple instead of the, the lower frequency color. This is a reverse spinning electron. No field around it. It's reverse spinning. They create a, in the right hand rule. Electricity goes that way. It spins this way. Well, that one's going that way and spinning the other way around, and it's breaking its fingers off. So there's no magnetic field there. That is, and also that collided with something and made a very interesting result. And that's the result right there. That was that white particle. It transitioned into one of these somehow and bled off that. And this is what I told you. That's the spinning of the electron, the right-hand rule. As it goes flying out of the accelerator, you see how they're expanded here, and then they contract. These are less energetic. That's an extremely energetic one for some reason. It 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 was it came through in a different orientation. The others they were whatever the difference is. This is is much more energetic than these other ones. And you can see because it's drifting to the left, I, it's probably spinning to the right, maybe spinning to the left, I don't know. But it, it's, it's going to have one of these spins to it, and it's supposed to be spinning this way, 
if it's going that way. And I believe, well, I know it's going this way. Now, and I believe it's spinning this way because it's drifting to the left. That would be the natural thing. It would hear here, and then it can't quite get to the same place each time. And, it, and that would give it that left drift. So that's all I can see. It's a right-hand rule. And that's light spinning through a single slit, I believe that was. And again, this goes back years ago. So some of these pictures, well, I, mean, I know all the pictures I'm talking about. That I can't remember. Single slit, double slit, I don't remember. And again, I don't know if I mentioned this. This is Rodney Warren from uh, Australia, and I worked on this years ago. And and um, and these are his pictures, and they, they cannot be surpassed, I don't think. However, I'm going to show you one that I got yesterday that's got got me interested. This is the plasma coming out of the accelerator. As it steps down, it presents this in two waves. I've seen this a number of times. It looks like it looks like a particle to me and it looks like a torus and I think I might have some idea how it's working with capacitive and inductive reactants. Somehow. <laughs> All right, this is virtually the identical same thing as light. We're smashing through what we have to break through this. It, it, as the particle breaks through, it splays out in the back, both sides, and it's a shock wave. And if you see, and in, in, I'm going to show you what it looks like in light. It's virtually the identical mechanism. Right? These two shots show it quite well. This is literally where the plane is. It's right about here, the tip of the plane. And it covers like just a little tiny spot here, but it disturbs everything around it because it's got to force its way through. When it does, that stuff forces this stuff, and that forces this, and they all force each other, and they start to illuminate because they're being crushed. That is what happens. It's a crushing. It's not. It's not just reflecting. It's crushing the fields that surround these little particles. Own a little field. And all of a sudden, somebody pushes them. And when it does, they glow. And that's what we're seeing here. All of these are glowing as a response to their fields being crushed. And then remember, the same disc, you see how it's elongating here? That is acceleration. Right? If it was just here and here and here and here and here and here, I could understand, well... Even if it retracted, I could say it's not accelerating. I'm seeing acceleration, and nobody can say it's not. Now, and I'm also seeing an increased huge amount of energy. This is creating reverse electromotive forces. You see this? These, these lines, these fine lines? That is a response to the interaction at the Venturi. All of this is being extremely excited, extremely excited. Now, is there a practical effect for this? I don't know. But I do know that that light is accelerating. These particles are now being crushing each other as they're stacking up to get to the, through this Venturi. Now they're creating a puddle effect here, forcing each other to crumb through here through the Venturi slit, which is a very thin slit with two airplane wings. It forces them to, to wing their way in. As they exit the slit, they force each other, get away from me, get away, get away, get away, because they're all negative, and they're all so close to each other, they cannot tolerate it. At this point, they just, they take off. At this point, they begin to reconstitute towards their normal light, but not quite yet, and then you get a filament effect. You see these tiny little filaments? I'm going to try to explain this as best I can. Right, it's a little bit tough to, for you to understand, but you may follow this quite well. These are all negative particles. They all say, get away from me. And they say, you get away that way, and you get away this way, you get away that way, you get away this way. I own this region. As they come through here, the bulk of them are coming through the center, pushing these and pushing these. So they stay in the center and keep pushing away and pushing away and these keep pushing each other's forwards. So you end up with the bulk of the electrons 
accumulating in a straight pattern through here saying everybody get away and you get away that way and we'll stay in the middle now then they you have a line that starts here and it says okay I'm, I'm pushing you away you're pushing me away so that gives this line then it creates this line and it pushes that one away and then you get another line another line another line that's what you see in the interference patterns in the double slit experiment it has nothing to do with waves there is no such thing as waves these are circular round rolling frequencies and 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 that's what they are there's no such thing as a non mass i mean a massless wave it just does it's just nonsense it just doesn't it nothing is nothing a non mass anything is nothing it's not there it's just not there this is us on the arm of the Milky Way being ripped through the ether, which is everywhere in space because it's all the light that escapes from anything just floats around in space. We're cascading through it, crushing it, heating the sun to extreme amounts, forcing it off of the edge of the sun and into the soul and causing the solar winds. We're trying to catch up to the sun, scrubbing through it as well. Twice a day we have high barometric pressures and low barometric pressures. It is because at that point we are either in facing it or, or hiding away from this impact with the ether. Venus spins backwards, crushing itself into the ether. No magnetic field. It's forcing its magnetic field inward. It's the only planet with no magnetic field. And it is hotter than hell because it's scrubbing itself backwards through the ether. The other ones are doing the right hand rule, which means spinning correctly to facilitate their movement through the ether. All right, this is our galaxy, or a galaxy, spinning through the ether of space, which all this stuff surrounding it is negative particles. It's infused with them. They are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. As these arms scrub, which are coated with negative particles, scrub those negative particles, they're pushed backwards because of the opposition to the negatives to negatives. They are forced backwards and start to crush in. They all are wrenching in the central core and creating the black hole. Now, Ether has not been discovered, absolutely not been discovered. It's time to hold these people to their feet to the fire. This is not right at all. That was not discovered whatsoever. It's been here right along. They were the one that poo-pooed it. Now it's time to fess up and say, yes, they were right. We were all wrong. That's the way to handle it. Not so, oh, we just discovered it. All right, come up to Mud Fossil University, ring the bell, do whatever you got to do to make sure you don't miss any of this, because this is the only place you're going to find reality, my good friends. And this right over here is going to show you the Higgs field. It's going to be us cascading through the universe, all kinds of things. Our ancient history, health, the whole nine yards. 5G is going to kill us. All right, come up there. Get up there and find out what life is all about. It's free. Nobody can hurt you there.